welcome everyone to the very first Today's Angler question answer about summer musky fishing. We are here to answer your questions. We encourage you guys to come to us through social media. Whether it's through Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, whatever. We're happy to help with any questions you guys have, but um, whether it's muskies yeah, or anything right, else. Right, for that dog matter. fish. <laughs> dogs, yeah, we like dogs. At any rate, the topic of today is summer muskies, and we want to run through the questions you guys had, and we're going to be giving away a new Today's Angler yeah. Lee Lures yep, hat. Yep, of your guys' choice. So, but before that, yeah, <laughs> we, have, we have some business to attend to. The very important business we have to discuss with you guys is first of which we appreciate your support beyond belief. Thank you so yep, much. Yep, thank you guys. Wow. However, there's a little number on our little statistic we have on, on our YouTube studio app that is kind of shocking, kind of shocking. Okay, here it is, folks. In the last 28 days, 69% of our viewers are not subscribed to our channel. So that says something. We need more of those viewers to be subscribers. That would be awesome. That would be much appreciated. It's a very easy thing to do. Hit that red button. And uh, if you want to get notified, hit it again. Yeah, hit it again to get that bell when we post a new video. Come on, what are you waiting for? It's free. <laughs> F-R-E-E -E, free. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, 30% of you guys are, but 70% are not. So that's crazy. We need more of you folks to help us out. That's just going to help the whole grand scheme. It's going to help YouTube push our, our own content out yes, there. Yes. So please hit that sub button. That would be much appreciated. Now let's get into the questions. We are certainly overwhelmed with the number of questions we received. It's definitely in the hundreds. Um, we're gonna go through as many as we can, as yep. quick as we can. Uh, if you don't hear your question, we're sorry. We're yeah, just gonna we do tried. our best. We try. <laughs> do our best. So you guys don't really wanna sit here for three hours, do you? Okay. Yeah, we wanna go catch some other fish yet today yep, too. Yep, yep. So. At any rate, the first question is, what is the importance of landing muskies fast and quickly releasing them in hot conditions? This question has been, this probably takes up, I don't know, 50, 40 of the questions. I mean, a Absolutely. lot of people ask about warm water muskies and Lee, you've been doing this a lot longer than I have, so I'll have you take this away. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's not a cut and dry topic matter. Uh, for those of you not familiar, muskies really stress out under warm conditions and lack of oxygen conditions. It's really kind of a, uh, they don't really go hand in hand, believe it or not. You can have very warm water and very high oxygen levels being on a clear, well oxygenated body of water like where we were just at in Minnesota. But here in Madison, we got a lot of algae bloom, a lot of, you know, the, that makes for less oxygen in the water. So it's not cut and dry, but if I had to pick a number, 80 degrees is kind of the cutoff yeah, number. Yeah. But anything 75 or above that temperature, you really need to be very conscious about how long you handle a fish. Uh, obviously with the gear we use, 80 pound braid, we're yep. not reeling them in for a long time. Right. So that helps. The bites are very quick. Yeah, yep. Um, so pretty much, you know, let the muskies tell you. How, how are they acting? Are they taking more than 30 seconds to revive? That's a warning sign right there. Anything over 30 seconds is telling you either it was a very long, stressful fight or you perhaps handled the fish too long. So to just do a really quick run through, you net your fish, you have a secure place to hold your net down, a Velcro strap, something, fold it in the seat, then your hands free, you've got your tools, you've got your pliers, long, strong pliers. Hook you, cutters. Some hook cutters, Need nip -X. <laughs> You absolutely have to have the nip -X hook cutters. One hand, seven knot, done. Yep. You got your jaw spreader, you got your phone. Probably the number one mistake I, I, I see people making is they, they get a hold of the fish for the picture and they're then they're trying to get their phone and fumble for their phone. Right, right. Have that ready. Yep. Unhook the fish first. That's number one. Unhook fish first. Number two, let the fish revive as you get your camera ready. It's getting a little more oxygen. The bump board out, everything. Yes, get the bump board wet, get yep. it all set, ready to go, and then you're ready for your photo. Grab the fish, take the picture, bump it, and off into the water. Boom. Just like that, get that thing back as quick as possible. That's the key. The key with, some, with hot water muskies, just get it back as fast as possible. 30, how long can you hold your breath? 30 seconds, maybe? There you go. That's about, it's probably as long as it should yeah. be. Yep, yep. 
And there are even points when the water temps are even warmer, or if you have a fish that's struggling and you know it was a hard fight or it was hooked Hook deeply, deep, yeah. yep. no pictures. Get that thing back. They'll tell you when they're feeling good. One more quick note on warm water conditions. I talked about the oxygen content in the water. Obviously, you have no way of knowing right. that. But I fished in 82 degree water and the fish go back as quick as possible. But that was on a clear, well oxygenated body water. It's very different from heavy algae bloomed water. There's a very big difference between the two. So hopefully that will kind of blanket cover all of yeah, the warm yeah. water questions. There's a lot of questions. Those. <laughs> yes, yes. Definitely we, very important too. I mean, that's yes. key. Keeping muskies alive is very key to this sport. <laughs> we need muskies. Yeah, we don't have fun if we don't have muskies. Okay, next question here. Bill Fries wants to know, big baits, big fish. What do you think, Robbie? Uh, generally, yeah, I would have to say, but, but. you know, we've had times where, uh, you know, little single eight bucktail is what we should say. Kind of a, uh, you know, they good, catch good 57 lure. inchers, 50, maybe? Yeah, uh, 52, 53 for me, you know, small bucktails. Yeah, I, it really, I don't know, time of year, but even that, it's just, it's a wash, really, when it comes down to it. I don't know. The only thing, in my opinion, when it comes down to is experimentation. You have to let them tell you what they want. There's no rules. It's not like in the spring, they put a bait on a bump board. Oh, that's over right, eight right. inches. There's no, I can't bite that thing. Yep, no way. Yep. I know, kind of a sucky answer, but that's like, that. you know, it just, you never know. You, you gotta know. put them all in the water. Day by day, fish day by you. day, it's always different. Chris Bielski, Belski wants to know if fishing the Fox River in Green Bay is worth it in the summertime. Eh, pretty hot in there, pretty yeah, gross. Could Gen be out. Yeah. There's food in there though, you know? Yeah. Ah, it's a, that's a hard one. I don't know, so. you let us know. <laughs> right, right, yeah. gotta go out there and fish it yourself. <laughs> Generally speaking, probably yeah. not the A1 place to be. Okay, next question. Dylan Hippler wants to know, if there's a stiff breeze and the fish are moving on top water, do you throw a chopper or a walk the dog? Chopper. chopper, the wow. chopper. Noisy. Yes. They can track it. <laughs> Walk the dog stuff, typically less than ideal conditions, uh, especially a stiff breeze, definitely not. I'd go chopper. Scott Simmons says, summer musky, what a blast. Okay, Cody Wald asks, what is the first thing you look for when planning to fish a new body of water? Great question. Wow. wow. One cool. of the best questions, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. You might be a runner up for the hat. Well, I know the first thing I look for, I look for the biggest food shelf, the largest weed flat adjacent to deep, deep the water. deepest water, yeah. Big old, mo like where the monster would sit. Ah, yeah, yeah. Or the other thing is look for the largest main lake point. That's another key area to look for Whatever as well. Whatever extends into the basin the farthest. <laughs> Six spots. Yeah. Maybe kind of like where you got your big one. Wow, yeah, exactly same thing. Yeah, yep, yep, on the lax. 50 pounder right on the exact spot we're talking about. Vinny Nett wants to know when is the best time to fish top water for summer musky? Early mornings, all day evenings? When they're biting them. <laughs> they're biting. I don't know. Just try them. That's experimentation. Randy Adamski wants to know what our thoughts are on musky location after the weed cutters has decimated wow. an area. What is... I hate weed cutters. They just destroy our lives out in Madison here. Hate weed just, cutters. I can't even imagine how many little fish those things kill, but... Yeah, what do we do? Uh, get we, mad? <laughs> we get mad and don't fish around there typically. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we're missing something. Yeah, right. Let us know. I gotta tell you, we have another runner up here, Robbie. Okay. Tony Stump wants to know, how do you give it your best odds at night? Wow. Give our best odds, give our best odds, give our best odds. Give our best odds. Well, <laughs> as a as a true, you know, leader of the give it the up, give it the best odds, I would wow. It's a hard phrase to say. Wow. What's, what's your favorite nighttime bait for fishing in the summer? Is his actual question. Oh wow. Okay, flap tail. We'll just go flap tail at night. Would be flap tail favorite. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, if it's calm. If it's calm, then but slash boiler. Yeah. Right. 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 Big time. Yep. Blades or flap. Boom. That's there. You go. Kyle Spindler wants to know: Is it worth fishing in a rainstorm? And well, big boo on a really heavy rain. Yeah, yeah. But immediately when it starts, or even more importantly. After, after, after the storm. Go, go do that. If your butt is not out right after that storm. Missing you're, it. You're missing losing. It. You're not winning. 
Joshua Starr wants to know, is it better to use a dark colored lure on overcast days or sunny? I don't know. Just cast it. I don't know. Let them tell you. <laughs> there, there's no rules. Just go fishing. Too many people worry about color. Yeah. Get your bait in the water. Just cast. Just Much cast. easier. Okay, Doug John wants to know, I catch most muskies early or late in the day. What sort of ta tactics can be done to hook them up with more fish midday? Get your bait. Deep? Is that what you're going to say? Deeper. Deeper. Okay. <laughs> Poseidons. Yep. Medusas. Rubber. Deeper blades. Yep. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. There you have it. Okay, Joe Headlock, you've got a terrific question. How do you locate current channels on the Great Lakes in accordance with wind on your electronics? Well, I don't use my electronics. Yeah. I use... Eyeballs. <laughs> eyeballs. You can look and see current seams and that are typically induced by wind like almost all the time it's wind induced. Where I really got onto that tactic was watching schools of carp lining up on current seams within our lakes here in Madison, feeding on whatever they're sucking on on the surface there. The muskies are exactly in the same place. There's food there. It is creepy how often it happens. Uh, we talk about it all the time, fish the foam. Right, right. It's like river fishing. <laughs> yeah. River inside the lake. I don't care if it's Great Lakes or right here in little Madison, Wisconsin. It's the same thing everywhere. Ethan Huber wants to know how to conquer bluebird skies and flat calm. Uh, we do too. <laughs> to, yeah. When you find out, let us know. The only thing we really know, I mean, slow down, glide baits, rubber slow, you know, just slow it down, fish deeper. That's all we got, really. <laughs> Try hard. Yep. Okay, Jake Ditter wants to hear about muskies being suspended in like 20 feet of water. What makes one place better than the next when targeting suspending muskies? Uh, either bait or wind currents. In my opinion, boom, yep. you're looking for current seams. No different than going on Lake Michigan salmon fishing. Okay, we got another good one here for you. Austin Juice, J-O-O-S. I'm butchering. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, how do I catch a muskie? That is probably the number one question. question. That's a great question. We don't know. We didn't catch one today. Yeah, right, right. We found it all morning didn't catch one. So you know what? It happens. It happens. You just got to just be casting. Bait in the water. That's yep. it. Yep. Okay, Chaz Diaz wants to know, suspended or shallow, how to locate muskies on new bodies of water. I like casting. So yeah. I'm gonna go shallow first. Yep. It's more fun too. <laughs> yeah. Generally, I like seeing suspended is hard. It's so hard to like get yourself out there, casting at brain. weeds, casting yeah. at points, islands. It's much more stimulating. However, on the way to that first juicy looking spot, look at your electronics. Slow down a little bit. See if there's some stuff out in the middle in the basin or whatever. Another terrific question here. Matt Puma wants to know if you could only pick five lures to throw for any lake, what would they be? So we'll choose six instead. We got six right here. <laughs> you got your bucktail. Single, 10, nine, double, yep. whatever you Single like. Single eight, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that covers tail. it. Yep. A Medusa, rubber bait, can't beat that. Did you say flat tail? Or did I you... didn't get there yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chopper, <laughs> you know, tail bait, you can't beat that. Poseidon for your fishing deep. Okay, so if the fish are not active, they're not chasing, yeah, you, just, you, yeah. you think where the, you know where they might be, a glide bait, that would be where, whatever glide bait you like. Just the lat lure style. And last but not least, if you know where they are, wow. and the conditions are either good or not good, yeah. you could throw Chuck one of one. these too. Chuck one of those. You might be surprised what <laughs> comes up. That's our lineup. Five, six baits, that's what we got. Okay, Jim Buchberger wants to know, do bad algae blooms have an effect on musky fishing and how do you fish when you have one? The biggest thing I can tell you is that when you have hard algae blooms, fish the clear water. And all you gotta do to figure that out where that is, is fish the calm side of the lake. If you have a predominant wind, say coming from the south, most of the algae, more of it, is gonna be pushed into the north end. If the water will be cooler, and cleaner down to the south end of the lake under the, that wind condition. Generally a good combination for summer muskies. Have we ever had any good bites under those I don't conditions? Talk about it. <laughs> wow. Good things. Good things have happened. Okay, we've got a fellow YouTuber on board here, <laughs> Mr. Nick Linder of Linder Media, James Linder's son. Yes. 
He wants to know if you could, oh, by the way, check out his channel. Yeah, go, go over there too, Nick Linder. <laughs> Nick Linder, Linder Fishing. Uh, okay, he wants to know if you could pick an all around bucktail and topwater lure for summertime muskies, what would they be? Color, blades, etc. cetera. Okay. Color, just whatever you like. We like black on black. That's always been a staple for us. This poor thing, I don't know what color it is anymore. It used to be a double ten, right? Yeah, now yeah, it's a now single ten. it's a single ten. ten that's been working actually really well. And then, uh, color, water? Yeah. Probably chopper, huh? Or, chopper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Day in and day out. Yeah. Color? Go wrong. What color do you like? What Nick, what color do you like? <laughs> I like the orange front because right. I can see it good. Chartreuse front. Loon, we've caught a lot of fish on. Yep. Go with what you're confident in. Okay, another good one here. Austin Sutliff asks, do you think pressured muskies remember when they have been, or what they have been caught on and have learned not to chase certain normally productive lures? Yeah, I doubt it. They're pretty stupid. Uh, I, I've often said it, I do think they're the dumbest fish in the lake. Um, but definitely the double 10 craze has gotten yeah, right, right. tougher. It, they, they definitely smartened up to that, I would imagine, but yeah, I don't know. To a point, I'm sure there's, that they learn, but when they have to feed, they have to feed, they can't help it, they yep. just eat things. Fred Armstrong wants to know, how do you set the tension on your drag? Set it where it will give. All these guys locking drags down, they have not experienced <laughs> the boat side rush of a really bow busting muskie. It doesn't end well. Yeah, Hooks you've got open. stories. <laughs> wow, yeah, I got some serious stories. Yeah, I'll just lock my drag. No, don't, don't lock do your that. drag. Not on big ones. Yeah, bad things will happen. They have too much power. Just where I can, it'll give. I know it'll give. So don't lock those drags. It's not going to end pretty. Brandon Porter wants to know what type of weather and moon patterns consistently provide the best musky action. I like steady weather low barometer anything 30 or under yep that's pretty good clouds we like clouds yeah, clouds are generally good but here's a factor here yeah. Let, let's hold the phone here clouds generally better middle of summer well this year the water temps you think they're getting warm they're up into the high 70s right. here anyway right and then you get a big wind and it falls right back to 73. What's it's that tell August you? here and it's 70, almost 73 degree water temps. It's just crazy. It's we, under 73. Right, so like this year, sun has been good for us. Very good. Yep. So as a rule of thumb, warm summers, they typically like better cloud, you know, cloud, ac yeah. you know, yeah. cloud action. Wow. There you go. There you go. That's, That's a good, good one. Yeah. Um, as far as moon goes, moon rise, moon set. Yep. I'm not big on under foot or overhead it is a thing i just i'm always out there so right right you're gonna be fishing that anyways okay steve burtons wants to know what is your night fishing program for vision in the boat Ooh. um just a headlamp i like when i remember my headlamp yeah that makes it easier Jeez, yeah <laughs> just a headlamp um i do like one with the red light on it too so it doesn't blind you out when you're playing with your bait or pulling weeds off your bait. Yeah, usually, I mean, it's dark, but like your eyes will adjust and you can see follows a lot of the times. A lot of the times you'll, you'll notice something weird behind your bait. So one other little note, I don't have it to show you, but basically all I do for night fishing is I take a piece of 20 pound monofilament, tie a slip bobber knot three feet up my line and super glue it in place. So you'll actually feel the line go tick, tick, tick when it hits your guides. Then you know you're at, uh, I know we'll do this in yeah, another right, video, right. but uh, then you know you're at your rod tip. Right, you're not banging that swivel every time you go into your L turn. <laughs> or you're not trying to do a figure eight with 20 feet <laughs> yeah, of line out. Right, right. <laughs> that happens too. A lot, a lot of times. Okay, Mary Jarrett wants to know, since I enjoy bass fishing, what be a few reasons and perks to musky fishing? Wow, life-changing moments. You know? <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing. Shaking uncontrollably, having night terrors at night of this night just like just, you ever set the hook in your sleep wow yeah I've definitely it, done that the obsession uh, it's it's worth it i don't know what else are you gonna do <laughs> what else are you, yeah where are you gonna go right right it's, it's just too fun okay ben stone asks when you raise a fish do you have a specific routine on going back on the fish or you do you tend to play it by ear 
This question was asked quite a few times. Um, for me personally, I'm, I'm gonna throw back right away or have somebody else in the boat, usually more often that way. Throw something different at it or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Different bait. Um, then I'll probably leave the fish alone for 15 minutes and then I'll go back through. If, the, if you really want the fish and nothing happens, go back again on the next weather switch, whether it's a cloud up, you get some clouds move in, wind pick wind up, pick up yeah. wind slack off, yeah. sun pop out, I mean, right. a change. Or a moon, moon set moonrise obviously, yep. it's a good one too. Okay, Lucas Jenkins wants to know, what is a go-to bait for highly pressured muskies? Mm. That one. Single weight bucktail. Hands down, this don't get it done, I don't know what's right. gonna get it done. <laughs> There you go. You gotta have a Esox Assault single eight bucktail, whatever brand you like. That's what we use. Okay, Taylor but Pedraza wants to know what's your go-to topwater lure: water chopper or a tidal wave? Chopper, right? <laughs> Wrong. Oh wow! There you go. Go-to topwater bait: flaptail. Flaptail. Chopper. That's eh, pretty close tie. Yeah. Mike McDonald. A true Lee wow. Lures customer. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> we appreciate it. The Lakey Fishes has a thermocline, 15 to 18 deep. What your what would be your approach in this situation? Fish less than that, I guess, is probably right, right. the best thing. Um, obviously, if shad are in play, suspended bite is way more likely, way more often than most bodies of water, yep, I yep. would say. Jim Fernandez says, for the guys who only make it out once every few weeks to musky fish, how do you maximize our chances to slay dragon? Well, you probably have to look where the boats are, really. I mean, if you're not out there every day, look for, pay attention to the guys who are out there every day. And, you know, yeah, that sounds bad, but, you know, that's where a lot yeah. of fish are going, you know? They probably know where, that something's happening. Right, right. Otherwise, look for that big major spot on the map like the biggest point shooting off into the basin, like we said before, that generally a key area to focus on, especially summertime. And if you're chasing boats, look for the pan fishermen as well. Walleye fishermen, uh, they're not far from food. Jason Clark here says, best beginner combo lures, etc. question mark. Well, to get into the sport, it's very expensive, obviously, but um, the Shimano Cardiff actually has served me well. I'm, that's what I kind of started off using, getting into the sport. And then uh, the Muskie Shop actually has some really good entry level rods that, that under a hundred bucks that you can get started with. The Muskie Shop Shield rods. We'll leave a link yeah. down below yep. for that. But if you want to go, I mean, I don't think they got nine footers. If you want to go right into the nine foot rod, obviously Chaos Tackle has the assault sticks too. And for one of those, I would say the SWAT, nine foot SWAT, yep, extra that, heavy. That would take, take you, I mean, that's all you need really. Everything. Yep. Uh, the baits, I guess we already pretty much went through the baits. Yeah, yeah. Got a question from Cole Reed. He's been in the boat with me when his, one of his best buddies got a 45 inch here, but he says, what conditions do you look for to throw a flat tail or even just a top water? Uh, clouds? storm about to come or a storm afterwards or like the time we caught our muskie it was sunny and it was a nice morning flat calm good time for a flap tail steady weather steady weather yep early in the morning or late at night here's a question towards lee uh here it goes from Cortland splitter this is from instagram so the names are a little funky but since you've spent so much of your time fishing minnesota in the past do you feel as if wisconsin strain muskies are more or less aggressive in general than leech lake strain the spotted's are definitely i gotta say dumber in general hungry i don't know if it's that they're dumber or more hungry what it is but they seem to have more shallow water tendencies they're less afraid of feeding when the sun's bright and sunny but that's pretty normal for Minnesota fish just because they only have so many days a year to be warm. So uh, the other thing I do find Wisconsin barred fish, typically all the ones we caught on Mille Lacs anyway, the Wisconsin barred fish stocked in Mille Lacs, we caught them significantly closer to sharper break lines than we did the spotted fish. So interesting little interesting, fun fact interesting. there. Here's an excellent question, Peyton Kurtz. What do you think the next big bait slash tactic will be in musky fishing? <laughs> Just when you think you cannot make a different musky lure, right. it happens. It ha bass fishing, classic example. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? You know, you could reinvent the plastic worm with a Senko. Well, musky baits are no different. 
Let's get this started. Let's get this started. Let's start with Robbie. This is this is Robbie's <laughs> actual invention. Yeah, that yeah, I thought about this, uh, I don't know, two falls ago. I wanted to fish a bucktail in the fall as slow as possible, and it kind of just evolved into one of the better summertime night fishing baits. I mean, wow. it's night fishing bucktail is that slow. Uh, it obviously has worked for us in the past. I'm a big fish at night for sure. Robbie, you taking a bucktail and putting a foam bobber, foam bobber on right, it right, right. inspired me this, to make this thing, right, right. which caught me my biggest muskie <laughs> ever. Inch. So there thank you, you man. There that, you go. That, that, that happened. <laughs> 56 incher. Bam. Next on the docket, chatterbaits. Chatterbaits. Something in the bass world and definitely evolving into the muskie world. We got the TNA angry dragon did not take long for me to see a 56 incher and uh hook into a 51 and a half so we like these lures it's it'll be fun uh the big thing that we want to try is actually fish these at night that would be nighttime nighttime chatterbait because this thing wow the first time i read about chatterbaits it said that chatterbaits displace more water than double tens and that that's why i bought my first one <laughs> and wow. caught a big fish on it yeah yeah first time ever out on monona Got a 45 incher on it. That was three, four years ago. And to me, that, at that time, that's, this was a magic bait. <laughs> and then to catch a 51 and a half, yep. your first time yep. using one of the- The Angry Dragon, so. Wow. Definitely something to try out. It's different. Um, different and, vibration. Yep, yep. It's different in the, in, in the musky world, so. Aha. Uh -huh. New to us, another new thing. What about that? Bucktail that spins no matter what. As slow as you want to go, yep. the thing is spinning all the time. As fast as you want to go too, and it doesn't pull hard. So for beginner musky people, something that doesn't wreck your equipment, there, there you have it. <laughs> it does not pull hard. It spins all the time. You can give it, put it on someone's rod that does have yeah. no idea what they're doing. You're guaranteed it's going to be spinning. Right, no matter what. That is the Bite Back Bait Trilogy. And uh, my first time using it up in Minnesota, got couple, right away. Yeah, yeah got, got some, so. Got two in the boat on it, couple, mm -hmm. one nice one, so. It's new, it's interesting, new vibration. I Boom. mean, that's a thing, you, you never know. You can burn the crap out of it too, yeah. and it does not hurt your hand. So, pretty cool on that deal. What is that, another bait that's not, you know, really new, but it's definitely changed the way we fish is the Poseidon. Uh, the white one, chewed, wow. Just being able to hit a different water column, it's different, Huge. you know? This bait on a typical retrieve is running six to eight feet. You're not hitting that with a bucktail, you're not hitting that with a glide bait, maybe a, a, a Medusa, but like, just on a straight retrieve bait, hitting yeah. that, that water column, that's, that's interesting. We have as much confidence in a Poseidon as we do a bucktail, in my opinion. Yep. And there you have it. That's that's what's new to us, and that's what we think that's gonna catch more fish for us. Another question towards Lee from Bow Fishing is Life 25. What sets Lee lures apart from other lures? You know, I get the question a lot, especially from people that are maybe new to musky fishing. Lee, why, why are your lures so, <laughs> so expensive? expensive? Right. Well, for one, the durability factor is second to none. These lures, you could catch a hundred fish on one of these baits. Yeah, this is uh, definitely my pride and joy flap tail. I don't know how many fish are on it, but uh, it's still clinking. It's still clinking. I wouldn't sell this one for a lot of money. That's for 500, sure. 500, 500 bucks, Robbie, <laughs> right. 500. No, no, won't do it. There you yeah, go. This thing is, yeah, they've been beat up. It's still running though. That's, that's what's crazy. So why are they so expensive? The f durability factor, the finely tuned actions, that were designed by an actual fisherman going fishing on a lake yep. catching actual muskies on them. They will do things other lures won't do. That I can promise right. you and I guarantee them 100%. If there's any of you out there that have any issues with my baits, because top waters can be finicky, yep. get them to me, I will fix it. Yeah, the thing is you can buy less of them, but you can catch more fish on them, you know, over a, yeah. a period of time, you know? Yeah, you can buy a plastic tail bait <laughs> or maybe five or six of them, and then you could buy one of and one just chopper. Just keep using it, right? Just keep That's, using it. That's why more cost efficient at the end of the day. Here's a question from Bryce eight one seven. What is the biggest muskie each of you have caught? Do you want to go first? Okay, sure. Uh, biggest muskie by weight was a fifty-five and a half by twenty-seven and a half inch Wisconsin strain fish out of Malax Lake 
in 2007, I believe. Flash forward 10 years or nine years. Yeah. And uh, I got my biggest from Mille Lacs, a 54 and a half by 27 inch muskie. Yeah, the cool lake, cool lake. You Some, suck. Yeah, that was lucked crazy. Out. Lucked out. Uh, biggest fish by length. I did get uh, last summer a 56 incher on a boiler maker. My let it be said, let it be known. My first, my first personal official bite on the boiler maker was 56 inches. <laughs> crazy. Thanks, Robbie. <laughs> Aiden Eckel. While you are out musky fishing on a clear body of water, do you think the color of your shirt makes a difference when a musky is beginning to follow on the figure eight? Well, oh I, boy. a lot of people do make fun of our bright shirts. Usually Lee, he likes bright shirts. They look good on camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say probably not. <laughs> I think probably noises like tapping your rod against the side of the boat. <laughs> Biggest uh, thing, Yeah. Uh, one of the first times fishing with Lee, I got scolded. Because uh -oh. I went on into my figure eight and I kept moving my feet. He scolded me. He said that probably oh, yes. spooked that muskie. So walking so, around walking while figure eight. Yep, yep. It's From probably. that day on, I kept my feet planted and have done figure eights. <laughs> there you go. I think that's more important. Tip of the day. Next question from one of our greatest supporters, Bill McConnell. Thank you for the question. Thank you for all the comments on our videos. All right, going into it. He's a not. I'm 95% casting. But when you do troll, what determines your speed? Is it what the action looks like on your lure, or is it just finding that sweet spot or sweet speed that the fish want? I think it's the sweet speed, you know, and it seems like muskies will only bite a bait going a certain direction sometimes, which is obviously wind current induced probably, making your bait run a certain way. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Just experiment yeah, that's probably right. the biggest thing was it on an outside turn inside turn speed that, change yeah yeah, yeah. I keep don't changing know. it up <laughs> okay we've got longtime friend who has caught many monster giants with me over the years john cleansing hey john what's up do you prefer big blades fish slowly or big profile top waters after dark uh fun factor top waters yeah you want to catch them Put blades. some blades yeah. on. Yeah, day by day. Probably blades will outdo it, but yeah. who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, remember that uh, 54 and a half incher in those giant waves back on the Lax? <laughs> yeah, that happened. Okay, Elijah Kane Keller has always got a good question or comment for us. Why does sharing your musky adventures mean so much to you guys? Uh, my biggest thing is, man, in 40, 50 years, I'll be able to look back at some of the one of the craziest moments in life like catching big musky just being able to look back on it i mean that'll just be very cool and also you know for you guys just being able to capture these moments and slowing it down and just showing what happens when you're out musky fishing for me personally i guess since i was probably about 10 years old when i really started fishing i always wanted to bring a different friend my dad traveled monday through friday and on the weekend saturdays he would take me up to the Wisconsin River, and I had a cycle of friends I went through. <laughs> Each week, I'd pick a different friend that could go or whatever, and I just always loved sharing it with people, showing them the experience that I have had. Right, right. Um, I don't know. There's just nothing like it. Something about it. When someone comes back to me or Robbie and says, hey, remember when you told me to do this or do that? Right, right. And, that caught me a fish. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> that's Priceless. Coolest, yeah, some of the coolest stuff, yeah, for sure. So cool, yeah, I, I don't know. Just, that's been my lifelong dream since 10 years old is to have this show, to have a show five, six years ago, yeah. and then to not have it, Right. Um, and now to be here at this place with Robbie. Good uh, times. This Good is, times, uh, yeah. yeah, this is as fun as it gets yeah, right, right now. Big time. So live your dreams and yeah. have fun. One, one little thing that I would like to put out there is, Guys, start running cameras in your boat because just being able to look back on some of the moments that you could capture, it's really easy. It's so, so simple. Yeah, I mean. One GoPro. One GoPro. On, on a, a chest mount. Or whatever. Or on a bow mount. Yeah. One. Just having that, being able to look back 20, 30 years and seeing your biggest fish of your life or whatever, those moments are priceless. And to have them on film, it's awesome. 
Wait till we pull up some of the old Lee footage. <laughs> That's gonna with happen. We're gonna wait till we get big. <laughs> if we ever get big. Right, right. Hey, big is, hey, we're at 10,000. Yeah. We never thought we would get to that yeah, point. Yeah, so. not this soon, so it's cool. Very cool. Thanks, Elijah. That was an awesome question. Uh, Spencer Anderson wants to know, what's your guy's favorite lure to throw in thick weed growth, specifically milfoil, if we contact that? Do we contact milfoil? Yeah, lots of it. Lots yeah. of it. Yep. Boiler maker. Boiler maker. Being able to run bucktail shallow big time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, top water chopper chopper you, you can hit this thing as hard as you want when there's weeds on it blow to, it off yeah exactly yep another blow tactic we can tr you can try if it if you're able to rip and medusa to the weeds that was like one of the that is why i bought a tranks 500 when i was 17. i wanted to rip rubber through weeds and it definitely paid off definitely <laughs> if paid you want it i mean if it, it hurts on the body but hey it catches fish when they're not biting and that's the shallow model, uh, just so you know, it has a hole in the top that indicates it's the shallow one, lighter. You can keep over the weeds better. Okay, Sam Pilaro, who caught some muskies out here with me on the chain, says, when you were younger, what truly made you fall in love with muskie fishing? Um, I'll let you go first, Robbie. Uh, my first muskie I ever caught was when I was in third grade. I was out fishing with my, with my dad, my mom, the dog was in the boat. And uh, just pike fishing with little little map spinners or whatever, and uh, hooked into my first muskie, which was a 38 incher. 38. And, uh, wow. 38 incher. Nice. Yep. And uh, yeah, ever since that, I wanted teeth in my life. I never hit the bass stage. I just went to straight to teeth. I love the fascination there. Poor guy. <laughs> uh, for me, one of the first muskies I actually ran into was I don't know. I was probably about 10, maybe 12 years old or so, uh, fishing on the shore on Lake Wingra throwing a beetle spin of all baits, uh, and it was pink, a pink, pink beetle, beetle spin. spin. And I came to the shore, and this muskie came right up and ate that thing off the end of my four pound test line. Done. That was it, I'm like, wow, that that was way cooler than any bass I've ever <laughs> caught. Um, that's where it all that's began where it for goes. me. Yep. Wow, Addicting. so cool. Okay, here's one for you. Mr. Esox Masquinanji. I didn't know he'd be answering a muskie today. <laughs> wow, no kidding. He wa the muskie wants to know, as someone who regularly watches the show, I've noticed you guys seem to be hardcore and fish through the whole day. Do you ever take any time off of the water uh, throughout the day? Lunch, nap, cool down, during less productive moon periods, etc. I wish we did. I really wish we did. But no, guys, we pack a cooler full of pork chops, chicken, you know, good, good protein, protein, good meat meals. And uh, that gets us through the days. You know, I mean, that's, yeah, we fish 12 to 18 hour days. I, this is what we do. <laughs> I've, I've been known to take a few naps in the yeah, boat. Yeah, that's good. I'm not as young as these guys, but I'm still beating <laughs> oh, it up. Right, right. Fish through the day. I mean, you never know when that feeding window is. You gotta go through it. Like this year in particular, fish are coming at heat of the day because the water temps weird, are cooler weird than times, normal. Yep. Boom, man, just gotta be out there. Keep your bait wet. Okay, Billy Webb, uh, he had his first musky experience of hitting a topwater bait today. Uh, hit your fish stick completely out of the water. Don't think it got Missed hooked. It. Yeah. yeah, did not Missed get it. hooked. This actually happened to me two years ago in October. Um, I was throwing a fish stick behind the boat working it way out there musky comes completely out of the water misses the lure just kind of taps it i told the guy in the front of my boat um throw your <laughs> throw your flap tail at it where i just missed it boom musky ate it just like that just crushed boom. the crushed the flap tail it's just uh yeah when a muskie's biting it's biting one time i remembered a smallmouth getting chased by a muskie happened oh. to be very close to a loon in fact and this is keep in mind all the period of about five seconds or so. The smallmouth is jumping, trying to get away from the muskie. The next thing in that muskie's path was the loon. The muskie hits the loon. The loon pops up out of the water. It definitely hit it, but not did not pull the loon under, obviously. I was within range, fired out, top H2O. I never even engaged the reel. Thing ate. It was gone. <laughs> 46 incher trying to eat a full size loon and a smallmouth, and then evidently uh, finally ate my top water yeah, bait. So cast something different at it or whatever. Kill yeah. Cast back at it. Get a lure in there. Yep, especially when they're biting top water, that means they're biting. <laughs> yes. Okay, Dave Vollmer wants to know what would you recommend for some easier to throw baits 
for young anglers, six to seven years old, both in ability to throw them and give them the right action. Top water, top slow water, top yeah. water baits. Um, that flap tail, just make sure they can cast something that big. <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah. of a bigger bait maybe. It's a bigger bait, but it's easy to really reel in. Um, what what about a jitterbug? I mean, wow, for a young. True. Yeah, one of those four inches, the bigger ones. I know the musky shop has some. Yeah, bass size jitterbug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, of course, the single number eights, like we talked about. Your mini chopper, maybe. Mini chopper. Um, the trilogy, the small trilogy. Right, Wherever it went. Here. Small trilogy. I mean, it's effortless to get this blade running, so that's another thing to try. But yeah. I think that's it. Just a little MEP spinner. MEP Just spinner too. No yeah. brain. Yep. No brainer. Number five. Yeah, number three, Anglia Long is what I caught my first musky on there a spinning rod. So there's that. Obviously, you don't need all the big heavy gear to reel in a musky. They're only 10 to 25 pound fish, generally speaking. So spinning gears, yeah. it's Works. fine. <laughs> Braided line nowadays, no brainer. Okay. Anthony Lopez, you're talking crazy, sir. I, I got I to gotta admit. Can you do 30 straight days of musky fishing just like you guess did for the 30 day ice fishing challenge? No, I'm sorry, no. It was 20 day by oh, the no, way. It was 20 days, but wow, that hurt the brain. <laughs> hurt the brain. I don't see it, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, gonna well, happen this year. <laughs> let's, let's, let, maybe you wanna take a whirl at that. We'll see how that works for you. Uh, Dylan Rothy, Rothy wants to know, during summer I have hard time getting muskies to commit or strike, I'm doing direction changes, uh, only getting occasional short strikes. Um, probably the biggest tip I can give you as a muskie fishing guide or doing these videos or whatever is incorporate a triggering action into your bait throughout the retrieve. One of the biggest things Robbie and I do, whether it's a bucktail, Poseidon, uh, steady reeling a Medusa, what, whatever you're doing, I'm reeling my bait, reeling my bait, reeling the bait, quick reel. Steady, 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 quick reel. Or change of direction, whatever, reeling. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Get them to bite out there instead of at your feet. Much more easier. <laughs> and here's the thing about doing those things I just talked about. Don't do it too much, because then it's not different. It's just gotta be one little different thing, three times, maybe four on a long cast. That catches more fish for us, I think. Okay, here's one for you folks. Uh, George McGrady wants to know how many hours on the water or a few, how few hours of sleep does it take for you to turn into mashed potatoes? Well, let's just say it usually starts from the from the night before of fishing. Um, if you don't get a lot of sleep from the night before, that will inhibit less hours to create mashed potatoes, you know? It might only be eight to 12 hours. Yeah, That's it's just, just uh, yeah, it's a hard one. Yeah, so pretty much when the maximum level of mashed potato hits for us, is when we drive two and a half hours to go to Green Bay. Yeah, that's where it all started. That's, that's where, where it all started. Yeah. It hurts. It really hurts. You, the, uh, ah, yeah, it's not fun. You fish all night, and then you see someone catch one in the morning. In the morning. Then you're out there another Who knows? five to ten hours. Yeah. Usually when you hit that 14-hour mark, is the safe bet that your brain is just gone. When you start hitting the 18-plus hour point, <laughs> The gravy from the mashed potatoes starts Spilling, oozing yeah. The butter, out. the everything. Yeah, that's what yeah. it happens. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Everybody has their own potato level. Uh, that's our potato, mashed potato level. <laughs> Jason here, uh, what's the best on the boat, on the water snack? Pork meat. chops. Meat. Pork chops. I like pork chops. Cold yeah, pizza. Meat. Yeah. Something yeah. you could shove in, fill you up, Keep you're chest. done. Yep. Okay, if you need something uh, else, Nuts, almonds, cashews, protein. That'll get you rolling. Okay, we've got uh, Jeremiah Wolf. He wants to know, uh, we've all had that oh my God musky moment mm -hmm. uh, where the knees shaking of a giant that got away. Got away. Uh, how did that uh, play out? Um, well, I was up in, this happened last year, filming with Chris Beulah and Mr. John B. And uh, let's just say I got the biggest rip on a medusa ever in my whole life i thought i was getting pulled into the water head shake head shake gone 
and I fall backwards into John. Yeah, yeah, that, that sucked. I wish I could, well, maybe I don't want to know how big that muskie was, but anyways, that was a big heartbreak right there. I was standing right next to you. I yeah. was prepared to grab your shirt in <laughs> case that thing pulled him in. What happened was I was standing on carpet on one foot, wet fiberglass on the other. Bad combination, we'll never be doing that again. And wow, what a bite. What an absolute bite. I didn't know muskies could do that. We did not see the fish. No. No idea. So to this day, I got its number. Yeah, we know where you live. We're <laughs> coming back for you. I guess one oh my God moment that comes to mind uh, for me personally was back in the day on Mille Lacs, flat, calm, sunny, but just getting into the prime time hour. I got a fly guy with me, not ripping on fly fishermen whatsoever, Chris Willen, so just, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, but this, this gentleman uh, had not really experienced a giant muskie uh, on a top water. He's throwing a top H2O and I'm telling him that right where you're casting now is one of the biggest fish we've ever seen. We've been working this fish for uh, more than a week and it was a mid 50 inch class fish. I'm like, you're right in the zone right now. This fish came up and ate the living crap out of that top H and I'm telling I'm telling you what, wow. wow. That fish, it was would have been the biggest fish ever in my boat on top water. I guarantee it was that fish. Yuck. He never set the hook. I had time to yell three times, set the hook. He never even moved the rod. He says, I didn't feel it. I'm like, that orange that's head that's on your lure, that, that orange bobber, dang, it's down. You got sucks. him. That is a hard pick. Wow. What yeah. a, no question, 55, 56 inch class fish. Yeah. Wow. I, we don't like these moments. Heartbreak. <laughs> On to the next subject. Brandon Lilly, what kind of question is this? Could I catch a muskie out of a cow track on a rainy day? Boo. Not that good. No, <laughs> definitely not that good. But Robbie's been uh, playing cleanup for me lately. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to catch well, him. Team sport. Doug Nutt asks, why do muskies hate me June and July? You're not alone. Yeah, that's sucked for us this year uh, not time. a good year not a good year I don't know go Kinda for us fish at night maybe who knows Justin Swinarski asks I have a boiler maker can I use it for trolling sure why not, why not? Uh, I would say trolling motor yeah yeah super slow trolling if floating weeds aren't a problem and one more thing I'll add and this will be a great tip if you're trolling casting anything if you want your boiler to run faster or deeper all you got to do is put on a little 3 8 to half ounce bell sinker. That'll get you a little more depth, a little more speed. Cast a little farther. Yeah, make the bait super versatile for you. Uh, Dan Cardigan wants the best advice for catching their first muskie in Wisconsin waters. Come here to Madison. Yeah, Madison's pretty dang good. <laughs> wow, you if we're like bummed out if we don't have action from four or five fish in right, a, in a right. half a day. Definitely so, spoiled here. Definitely come here and you will have a great chance to catch a muskie. And Derek DeBittner wants to know, what is your favorite moment on today's angler so far? Uh, mine had to be catching 250s in one day, that craziest day of my life fishing. It's gotta be, I don't know if I could ever top that. <laughs> my favorite moment on today's angler so far is when I took Robbie to Minnesota for the first time. And life changing. Yeah, we uh, get into the parking lot, and who meets us in the parking lot was James Wender. First, yeah, did, did not know that was going to happen. Did not know my first day ever fishing in Mille Lacs would be with James Wender. That was uh, definitely a, a shock factor there. <laughs> <laughs> to piggyback off of that, the very next day when Robbie caught the absolute monster fish of a lifetime, 54 yeah. and a half by 27. Insane. Wow. Dude, yeah. that, that's yeah. my moment right that there. That definitely sealed the deal, and wow, yeah. Here I am, here we are. I, I guess we're gonna start recording we're, we're, shows. Yeah, we should probably just do something here. <laughs> wow. That's how this really yeah, yep. got, came to be. Aaron Laking here from Madison asks, do those hats bring good luck? You're the one with all the luck lately. All right. What right. hat are you wearing? Yeah, we wanna fishing. know that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Congrats on the 50, by the way. Uh, Dave Valmer asked, when fishing topwater baits, do you leave it on the surface or submerge it on the figure eight? I just read the mood of the fish. If the fish is high in the column, I'm gonna keep it up top. If it's slow and lazy, I'm gonna put it downstairs. Very few fish I've caught underwater on the figure eight. 
I like just to keep it on top because it's fun. It's exciting. Thank you to everybody who has sat through this rather long question and answer video. But now it is the time to pick the winner of our favorite question. The drum roll. Here we go, here we go. Goes to Elijah. Wait, wait, wait. Before we announce the winner, hit that subscribe button if you have not done so yet. Thank you very much. Okay, proceed, Robbie. <laughs> Goes to Elijah Kane Keller with the question, why does sharing your musky adventures mean so much to you guys? That's the question that, yeah. that's why we do it. That's why we're sitting down and yeah. doing this video right now. So guys, thank you so much for all of the questions. Elijah, we'll get in contact with you. Get that hat out to you or whatever, so. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys liked this, enjoyed this, found it useful. Um, please, we encourage you to contact us and answer any of your questions yep. about uh, yeah. whatever. Through Instagram and uh, yeah, follow us on Instagram. Like us on Facebook, hit us up there. We're, we're usually pretty good. At, we, we try to be good at answering questions. We're but trying. That, but that is our best way to get a hold of us. So I guess we'll probably uh, have to do another one in yeah. one of these some point. Maybe yeah. uh, fall, fall time. Fall muskies maybe will be the next question and answer video. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time.